Good morning. This is Erica with Launching Legacies. Welcome to our daily devotional. Today we are continuing our devotional on present, and it's about the presence of God. And so no matter where we go, um, God says that he is present. It's part of the attributes of God, omnipresent, right? Meaning always there, always present there. So we're going to look at Psalm 139 verse 7 and it says, this psalm was written by David and David says, I can never escape from your spirit. I can never get away from your presence. If I go to heaven, you are there. If I go down to the grave, you are there. If I ride in the wings of the morning, if I dwell in the farthest ocean, even there, your hand will guide me and your strength will support me. I could ask the darkness to hide me and the light around me to become night. But even in darkness, I cannot hide from you. But to you, the night shines as bright as day. Darkness and light are the same to you. Beautiful, right? Um, one of my favorite uh, verses of scripture is Psalm 139. And it talks about just God being there. It's not just even in that past, that frame is talking about him being there with us. But even before that, it's talking about him knowing us, searching our heart and knowing us and knowing what our thoughts are far off and being there to respond to those, to those things that we need. And so today's is dedicated to no matter where you are, right? We talk about God being ever present, but David wasn't just talking about a concept of God, like a far off concept though, like God is good. And people say this all the time, but they're not giving good examples. They're not really living in the concept of God is good. David, wrote this psalm from the depths of his heart he like look it i don't know where i can go where i can escape from you even darkness becomes light right these fearful places these places where we feel like we can't reach god he's saying in this psalm that you know what no you're there in those places even if they're dark to me if they're scary if they're fearful you're with me um if i if i ascend to the heights of the heavens right to the highest place the most enjoyable place this delightful place the place of rest you're with with me or if I'm in a place of tur uh, turmoil if I'm in trials if I'm in situations that aren't good you're with me some the King James version says if I make my bed in hell which is not talking about um, like the hell, like damnation hell, but more like in the depths of the earth, in the lowest part, this translation said the grave, no matter where you, where I am, you're with me. And so yesterday we talked about the invitation. We talked about God knocking. And I said, listen, if he's knocked and you've opened the door, then he's there and he's not ever departing. There's never a time where he says, yeah, well, I've had enough of your shenanigans or I've had enough of your foolishness, or you just don't seem grateful enough. And I'm leaving. No, he says that he'll abide with us always and David writes about this and this is the thing about David that's peculiar is that David is um, a, what the Bible calls a, God, a man after God's own heart as the scripture says but David was not a perfect person and he was involved in all types of shenanigans he had all kinds of things going on that weren't appropriate right he was um, having affairs with people his son tried to kill him because he didn't manage a family situation right and he's, his son overthrew the his um, kingdom he had all types of issues um, and he made a lot of mistakes and so he was a very regular person in that right very human in his in his personhood but and so there were low places for David in his life there were places where he was doing things that maybe you would think oh God can't be there and I've heard that before right I've been in um, in certain denominational gatherings or churches in which they're like, well, the Lord is not going with you to the club. He's not going to go with you to the wherever you go. And it, and I thought that's peculiar because when David writes, he's, he's coming out of a situation where he's committed adultery and killed a man. And yet he says that, God, you're with me no matter where I am. And so I don't see how God would be intimidated by a nightclub or by a gathering of unsavory people and that he wouldn't be able to be with a person in the club. It sounds a little bit like the Pharisees and the Sadducees when Jesus has a party with the, that the tax collector uh, with Levi, we call Matthew. He has a party and um, the, the, 
Pharisees are talking about Jesus. Like, how can you be with all these people? Surely you're not of God because you're with all these people who are sinners and tax collectors and all these types of things, right? And so there can be a doctrine that, that we have to be careful of is that the assumption that if we're doing wrong, that God is not there with us. No, nope, the scripture is very clear. If we invite him in when he knocks, if we ask him to come in and to sup with us, right, to eat with us and to be our friend, then he will be a faithful friend. He won't be the friend that leaves us. He'll be like David said says, no matter where I go, I can't escape from you. In my lowest place, you're with me there. So if you're in a dark place, if you're in a place where you're like, I don't see how God could be here or he could be involved in any of this. Now, he, granted, he's not doing the inappropriate things that may be, be going on if, if in fact there are inappropriate things going on, but he's with you through it all because he's that friend that's like oh I am your sober companion <laughs> I am the designated driver I am the support for when you need support and so I want to encourage you because you may be in any place in your life you may be in a place where you're wayward and you're doing whatever you want to do and you know you shouldn't be doing it and I don't know what that could be but you can fill in the blanks you may be in a place where you're lonely or sad and you don't know you don't feel that you um, have any companionship you may be in a place where you're excited and joyful and you're enjoying this season it you can be any place but I want to assure you that no matter where you are the scripture says that God is going to be with you there he is present He's present no matter where you go he's present no matter what you're going through no matter how you feel he is there. And so it's like, well, Erica, I don't feel like he's there, right? That might be how you're how you're feeling right now. Well, I don't feel like he's there. I don't feel like he's there in this marriage. I don't feel like he's there in this situation. I don't feel like he's there when I'm parenting. I just don't feel like he's there. And so what I want to do, what I want to say to you is that a feeling does not dictate the truth. The truth is he's there. So if he's there, acknowledge him until you feel that feel him being there with you. And that might seem backwards, but it's the right thing to do. Why? Because the truth is he is there but maybe you haven't gotten used to acknowledging his presence in that marriage maybe you haven't gotten used to acknowledging his presence in the midst of depression maybe you haven't gotten used to seeing him when you're making bad decisions maybe you haven't gotten used to turning towards him in the midst of uh, bad circumstances or decisions that are difficult but even if you haven't gotten used to it you can always change your mind because he's always there he's always being faithful to us by being there in the highest height in the deepest depth in the lowest place of depression and sadness and sorrow he's there and in the highest place of euphoria and excitement and just uh this feeling of there's nothing can go wrong he's with you there too and he wants to be acknowledged in that place because when you acknowledge him then you remember that no matter what it is that you're going through it is a season and not a lifetime it's not going to be forever nothing is forever in in the way of times and seasons and circumstances nothing's forever but God's presence his presence will always be with you remember he invite you invited him in and if you invited him in he's going to be the loyal and faithful friend He'll be with you. He'll keep riding with you. So I want you to be encouraged because some people have got it wrong. Very clearly, they've got it wrong. Well, he won't be going with you to this place and he won't be going to that place. There's no scripture that says that. There's no scripture that says he won't abide with us. There's no scripture that says he's not always present. There's no scripture that tells us that he that he's disgusted with us and will run away from us, that he will be a disloyal friend. No, the scripture says that he'll be faithful if every man is a liar, if every man is deceptive is deceptive he will be your faithful friend and so i want to encourage you with that with psalm 139 verse 7 through 13 that you know what no matter what's happening he'll be with you and i'm glad for that and so i'm praying for you that you would truly receive that he is there acknowledge him even when you don't feel it because a feeling doesn't tell us remember doesn't tell us what to do a feeling is just there we feel it but we don't have to act that way we can say you know what i don't know if i feel you god but i believe you okay and believing him in this case is far more important than feeling him so believe that he's there when he says that he's there and then i think you'll feel it turn around for yourself right so the feelings will come after you start believing what it is that he has said is true I want to just remind you again, we are praying for you. We hope that you're praying for us as well. And as you go through this devotional, I want you to just remember, no matter where I am, God, you are present and I'm grateful for it. And we're proving it through the scriptures. You're present. You're there. No, you're there. In my lowest place, you're there. 
in the highest height, you're there. And so be encouraged with that. And tomorrow we will continue our devotional on present. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye.